We all have that one friend that can literally live on junk food, Pepsi Cola, corn chips, Doritos, honey buns, donuts, and seemingly they're still slender and evidently in good health. How's that fair? Uh, it seems like it's not fair, at least to me it does. I think it probably does to you too. In this video, we're gonna unpack this concept and why this occurs and why your slender, healthy friend may not be as healthy as you think he or she is. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and this video is going to help you understand the personal fat threshold. Where are you fat at? Your body has an entire arsenal of hormones that decide if you store fat, where you store fat, how much fat you store, and so on. And so for all of us, for, for all of humanity, there is a bell curve distribution of almost every attribute of, of humanity. So the personal fat threshold is a theory that's quickly gaining traction in the scientific community. It appears that people with different genetics store fat at different rates, and they also store fat at different places on their body. Now, where you store fat is very important. For you, it might be important when you look in the mirror, but for doctors like me and other healthcare providers, where you store fat is actually very, very important from a health standpoint. Storing fat at the wrong place can actually be more unhealthy, even though it looks better in the mirror than storing fat in places you'd rather not store it. It's well known in the medical and nutritional communities that people of Asian descent and Indian descent can eat a very high carbohydrate diet and yet remain slender. But the problem is, is that because of their personal threat, fat threshold, they're storing fat at very uh, unhealthy places like their liver and around their internal organs in their abdomen and ultimately in their pancreas. And so when you look at someone of Asian or Indian descent or some Caucasians who are on the bottom side of the bell curve distribution, they can live on carbohydrates, a very high carbohydrate diet, and yet look slender. They are obviously slender, but they can look metabolically healthy even though they are not. Other people, uh, especially Caucasians and people of Nordic descent, if they eat a high carbohydrate diet, they're going to immediately start to de uh, deposit fat that we call peripheral fat. So fat in, in their upper arms, in their thighs, in their booty, on the outside of their belly, their lo love handles, their, their back boobs, their front boobs. All of these places immediately start to store fat. And so um, many Caucasians won't develop early prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, or fatty liver. They'll just store fat peripherally. And although this looks uh, less than optimal in the mirror, it is actually protective against diabetes and fatty liver up to a certain point. And then back to our friends with Asian and Indian uh, genetics, they'll stay very slender on the outside, but they'll be storing far too much fat in their liver, in their pancreas, and around their internal organs inside their abdomen. Your personal fat threshold will change as, as you go through this journey we call life. Uh, for example, when I was in my early 20s, I was that friend that you would hate and despise because I could live on powdered donuts crumbled up in chocolate milk. I, that, was, that was my standard breakfast back then. And I would have chips and, and donuts for lunch and then a huge plate of pasta for dinner. And I was able to do that for years without developing any peripheral fat, the fats you can see uh, on the outside of my body. If we could go back in time and grab my 25-year-old self and hold him down and check his hemoglobin A1C, his C-peptide, his fasting insulin, his markers of inflammation, and we could do a, an abdominal ultrasound on my 25-year-old self, we would see immediately that I was metabolically sick. I would have hyperinsulinemia and elevated levels of inflammation, and definitely I would have too much fat stored in my liver and my pancreas, but looking at me from the outside, I look very slender and healthy. But as we go through life, we tend to start to store more fat peripherally or mirror fat, you might want to call it, that you can actually see 
when looking in the mirror. And we don't know exactly why that occurs, but we do know that as people get older, it becomes easier or less hard for them to develop peripheral adiposity or developing fat on the outside where other people can see it. The people that I hope you'll share this video with are people who are in their, their teens or 20s or early 30s, and they're very slender, but they live on a high carbohydrate junk food diet because looking in the mirror, they, they judge themselves to be very healthy. Look at me, I'm very slender. How can I possibly be sick? I obviously don't have diabetes or fatty liver. The only way for these slender, pseudo healthy people to tell if they have these internal conditions or not is to have their lab work checked by a healthcare provider. When you understand the foundational concept of the proper human diet, that all human beings have the best health, the most optimal health when they're eating a low carbohydrate diet and definitely a diet that's free of sugars and grains and vegetable oils and highly processed food, then you start to understand that regardless of how old someone is, they could be a teenager, they can still have prediabetes, type two diabetes, fatty liver, fatty pancreas, and very high levels of inflammation. All of this is based on their personal fat threshold. It's based on their genetics and it's based on their age. We cannot just look at these people and just say, well, they're very slender, therefore they must be healthy. Indeed, this is the argument many people make when I'm having slap fights on Twitter. They'll say, well, look at, look at Asians. They're very slender and they eat nothing but carbohydrates. Yes, but if you actually check their lab work, Asians and Indians actually have some of the highest levels of prediabetes, type two diabetes, and fatty liver of anyone in the entire world. I hope understanding the concept of a personal fat threshold will also make you think twice before judging an obese friend or loved one as being lazy or being a glutton. This is not the case. The, there's two things going on. They have a personal fat threshold that when they eat a high carbohydrate diet, it tends to make them store fat on the outside of their body or the periphery. And also they just haven't learned that all human beings are by design low carbohydrate mammals. Once they understand these two concepts, it's very easy for them to start to burn off the peripheral fats, but also for your skinny friends, when they do go to their healthcare provider and they get their labs checked and find out, holy crap, I'm pre-diabetic or holy crap, I have hyperinsulinemia. That's gonna lead to a lot of terrible health problems as I get older. Then they're gonna say, well, what's causing my hyperinsulinemia? It's a high carbohydrate diet. And once they start to dial down their carbohydrate intake, their fatty liver goes away, their prediabetes or type two diabetes goes away, their fatty pancreas goes away immediately, their inflammatory markers start to go down. And then they not only look healthy, but then they actually are healthy. And for your morbidly obese or obese friends, when they realize that they're a low carbohydrate mammal, that if they eat too many carbohydrates, they're gonna get fat. They can start to lower their carbohydrate intake and again, benefit from all of the, the amazing health benefits of eating a low carb, a ketogenic or a carnivore diet. All of these diets being part of the proper human diet. I've included a couple of research links in the show notes down below. Uh, please do some further reading, reading about this. Don't trust my opinion or anyone else's. Also, you may want to print out these studies if you go to your doctor as a, as a slender person or a skinny person and your doctor refuses to order these lab tests, then you can show them this study and say, hey, what if I'm Tofi, thin on the outside, fat on the inside? I really should know that because that's a, that's a huge risk for my future health, right? please consider clicking that subscribe button and a little bell button right beside it so that every time I post a new video, you'll be one of the very first people to know. And if you'd like to help me fight chronic disease, both in obese people and in skinny people, please become a Patreon. Uh, there's a link right down below. It's a super quick sign up. You can throw a buck or two my way to help me continue this fight to help everyone be healthy in this unhealthy world. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.